Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me this morning. Pastor Mike from Cornerstone. We're coming into the, the time and season of uh, the Passover and Easter and Palm Sunday and Good Friday. And I just wanted to just drop a quick note to you folks and just, uh, just remind us of the significance of the events that are coming up in the next couple of weeks. I want to talk about great expectations. That's the title of my message for Sunday, Palm Sunday. And, uh, just go over some things just to bring us to a, a place of remembrance. So let's just jump into the Gospels really quick. I want to be reading out of Luke chapter 19. And I'm uh, going to be reading out of, uh, let's say, verse 41. We'll start there. Because I just want to talk about Jesus in, in Jerusalem and the things that he has memory of. It says there, it's entitled, Jesus Weeps Over Jerusalem. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known even you, especially in this your day, the things that made for you peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. This is Jesus coming in on Palm Sunday. Great expectations. This, the crowds were, were uh, oh, on fire. They were just so excited. There was a lot of murmuring and a lot of, lot of talk about who Jesus of Nazareth was. And he had just done some incredible events. His ministry had been going on in that region for some time. And as he, as he wept, as he says in here, if you had known, even you, especially in this, your day, the things that make for your peace, but they're hidden from your eyes. The Prince of Peace is coming to visit you. He comes every day as a new opportunity for his visitation in your life. And see, Jesus, he, he'd been to Jerusalem for several times. He was uh, dedicated as a child in Jerusalem. If you remember the story, there was a, a prophetess there that saw, and she said, Behold, and she knew this was the reason she was still alive. And then Jesus, when his folks took him back up there, I believe it was for a Passover, and they, there was a big bunch of his family there, and they all did their thing and were heading home, and then suddenly Mary and Joseph went, Uh-oh, where's Jesus? And they looked all through the, the, the caravan, and he wasn't there, and he ran. They went back to Jerusalem, and where was Jesus? He was sitting in the temple, talking with the people, the priests, and they were amazed at his wisdom at 12 years old, at 12 years old. So as Jesus is coming in out of Bethany, after raising Lazarus from the dead, this was all set up. God had positioned miraculous things right up to the very moment of his visitation. And he had proven himself that he was the son of God. And here he comes. He comes down off the off there, crosses that little valley, and it says that uh, as he was coming in, that but though he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him, that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? See, he was coming down. He was coming down. There were still the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they just couldn't get it. And here's this, this big gathering, John chapter 12, verses, uh, oh, let's, let's look at uh, verse 12. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, he sat on it, and it is written, Fear not. Daughter of Zion, behold, the, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. And it says in verse 16, His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus had, was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. See, Jesus knew. He knew what was coming. And he was still ready to to walk in. He knew what what lay before him. If you read some of the other Gospels, he even told uh, his disciples before they got there, he says, you know what? I'm going to my death, but I'm doing it for a purpose. And his purpose this week and today in your life is to come and bring and be the peace 
the Prince of Peace in your life. And if you're in a place where, uh, like many of us, we're like ducks on the water. We're calm on the top, but we're paddling like crazy underneath. And he has come to bring you a peace, a place in your life where you can be unconnected. You ever been unplugged? We are so busy. We've lost our ability to manage our own time. But here is the Prince of Peace coming to you today, saying, unplug, come and abide in me, branch and plug into me, and I will give you a rest and a peace that you'll find nowhere else. So as we come into this season of the, the Passover, the, the Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday and Good Friday, take a moment, unplug, stop some of the busyness, and sit and think about a visitation. Today is the day of your visitation. You don't want to miss this. It's the most remarkable day of your life. Today is your new day, a day of new beginnings with Christ. Ask him to bring a revelation of himself to your heart that you could find that peace that has eluded you for so long because that's who he is, the Prince of Peace, your Savior, your friend, your brother, Make time. Seek his face this weekend. If you haven't been to church in a while, what a perfect time to go back. Get reintegrated. Get plugged back into the, the, the place of life where you are a living stone and you are joined with others to become a habitation for his presence. God bless you. I hope to see you, at least if not in my church, in a church near your home and participate Become one with him and enjoy what he has done for you. God bless you. Thank you again for joining me. See you next time. Bye-bye.